guys today subscribe to me and also stay on. I'm in the call so I'm going shopping I'm really in the call uh, will you please get out of my get out of my wearing it yeah it's so cool I mean my my butt's are so annoying uh, I said that so everybody subscribe or else I'll kill you. So bye. It's here. And the 8300. And I gotta go up on the road. We'll see you in a second. There it is. Well, it's here. That is why I put guidance on this tractor. 12 row, John Deere, 1760. I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out in the field and seeing what it can do. So here it is, a John Deere 1760 planter, Max Emerge, with in furrow fertilizer. It's got two 250 gallon tanks on it, three bushel seed boxes on a 12 row, 30 inch planter. Set up for, it's got the row cleaners already on it. It's got the uh, handles here for quick adjustment on down pressure. Um, now there's a few things here wrong with it that are going to have to be fixed that there's a few of these closing wheels that need to be worked on but it's got the uh, Martin no-till planters and um, ground driven fertilizer pump on both dual pumps and for the uh, ground driven planter too. I'm pretty happy with everything. A few things wrong, but it shouldn't be too bad. Be a lot more efficient and planting should go a lot quicker. Yeah, so I've been running that. I've got about 100 acres under my belt with it and uh, getting ready to throw some more seed in from the seed tender. Uh, but yeah, it's it's going pretty good. I'll make some more videos on it later. Um, I'm just trying to get everything kind of figured out now. So, been a few issues here and there with it. No, nothing major, major. Plant's good, right on the money with population and everything else. And depth and everything else is just spot on. So this is very nice. All right, everybody. I am uh, planting here on the new farm. It's a 300 acre piece of property. And I've got the 1760 in the ground. I am in love with this planter. To go from a John Deere 7000 to a John Deere 1760 is a night and day difference. And this isn't even new technology, it's the amazing thing. Uh, this is, fifth, what, 15 years old? 10, 15 years old, something like that. So the new technology 
if this is uh, if this is where it's at now, 10 years old or 15 years old, I can't even imagine what those high-speed uh, planters run like. Now I'm going slow. I'm still on my outside rows, uh, but this thing is very nice. It tells me all the information that I want to know. Look, no hands. chunks of land on the other side of that tree line that you can see. Now one thing I'm really going to like about this system is when I'm out row cultivate. Long straight rows definitely your friends when it comes to uh, cultivate weeds out of rows. Thanks. Row cleaners are doing an amazing job. The pneumatic down pressure is doing awesome. Uh, it doesn't have row shut off, but it does have section shut off, which I'm getting ready to hit right now. Right here. And uh, I just hit, hit that button to raise it up because I'm going through a wet spot, so I'm not going to plant through here. But. Uh, Man, this thing is awesome. It is awesome. Dad's out right now mowing hay. Um, we've already sold, actually I sold 200 bales this morning to one guy. He's gonna come and pick them up out of the field, which is definitely, definitely cool in my book. That is less work that I gotta do. Uh, one thing with this system I am having to adjust for is the row width on the 12th row and in between the 12th and 13th row. It is a little finicky. Um, it does adjust quite a bit. So uh, as long as I'm in my rows, as long as I'm in my rows with the row cultivator, uh, should be a problem because. 12 row planter, 6 row row cultivator, shouldn't be an issue. Here's my, uh, when I want to take off the auto steer, I just flip that down, make my turn after I raise up the implement. Just like this. How's that for one handed? <laughs> Very nice! High five! <laughs> I hit it again, picks up my steer path, and I just set down the implement. And I am also, and these tanks are uh, liquid infertile fertilizer. So I am planting with, uh, on these, uh, Big Yield BP Inferro. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun to this point. I just have a long season to go. It's June 8th, and I have six more hundred, 600 more acres to plant yet. So it's dry. We need some rain, but I need to get the beans in the ground before we get any more rain. for sure. All the people that I was 
teasing before about having uh, auto steer, auto track, whatever. This is worth the money. And it wasn't that expensive. It really wasn't. A couple thousand dollars is all. Worth the investment. Now the planter, that cost a little more than a couple thousand. Starting to rain. Got to go inside the truck. We need it real bad. I just wish I could have had a few more hours to get everything done I needed. But I'm not going to complain. I need the rain real bad. I need my truck to unlock more. <laughs> It's not showing up as good on uh, this camera, but it is. It's dark over there. Oh, you're real dark. Good thing I got out of there when I did. You know what happens to sugar and rain? It melts. And I'm as sweet as sugar. You can just ask my kids and Kylie. They'll tell you. Hey guys, it is July 3rd, and there's been a lot of stuff going on. There's been some things I've not taken videos of. I've been so busy with a lot of different things that I've just, I've really fallen behind on my videos. But I've been making some. Um, I've got probably six or seven or eight in in the process of being made so just bear with me stay tuned in and you guys won't be disappointed at all thanks so i run on the fuel cultivator and uh no hands this 
nice. I love it. Getting a lot of these things figured out. Uh, we got 14 and a half inches of rain over a uh, two week span. So I am still out here getting ready to plant some soybeans in this field. But first, as you can tell, it's pretty green, so we're working it up, trying to keep uh, keep the weed pressure down as much as possible. This this field still is going to have quite a few weeds out there. It just it is what it is. But if we can mitigate as much of it as possible, then. We'll still be able to harvest the crop off there, I think. 